Hernández, tengo 16 años de experiencia trabajando en el banco, trabajo en el Banco de Comérica, tengo mucho de mi experiencia es de analista de crédito comerciales y ahorita um, 
soy manager de uh, cartera de empresas en uh, uh, de empresas medianos. Hi, my name is Saul Hernandez. I work at Comerica Bank. I have 16 years of banking experience, uh, mostly in credit analysis. And currently, I'm a portfolio manager for a middle market loan group. Um, our office is in downtown Birmingham. Thank you for having me here. We're going to switch our microphones. We're going to send that window instead. Brenda Stardis. Me llamo Carlton Shelton. Pardon me. Mi español no es muy bueno. All right. Gracias. <laughs> Um, I so I'm going to just speak English now, and I'll try to properly uh, add, add some when I feel comfortable. So hopefully it doesn't come up too bad. Um, bottom line, though, is my name is Carlton Shelton. I'm the senior business development officer at Opportunity Resource Fund. We are CDFI, and so that means that we are a mission-driven organization that's looking to assist with lending for folks that have been historically. Um, having a little problem with access to capital from, from traditional channels. Okay. Over 30 years in business overall. Okay. So, yeah, that's fine. You're fine. So, Carlton está trabajando con una, una fo un fondo que se llama Opportunity Resource Fund. Y ellos son micro prestamistas eh, y pueden prestar desde 10 mil dólares hasta eh, 500 mil. Um, y trabajan más, como no es un banco, es una institución... Um, de comunidad, de, de hmm, financiamiento de comunidad, no sé, CDFI, ¿no? Es commercial, help me out here, guys, Credit, community, financial, community development institution. Thank you. All these acronyms. Um, y ellos trabajan directamente con el, el dueño de negocio para ayudarles a tener acceso. Y la mayoría de sus clientes son clientes que históricamente nunca han tenido acceso a, a préstamos y está aquí para ayudarnos, es un nuevo partner. Entonces, muchísimas gracias por, por acompañarnos hoy. Carlos. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Carlos Durán. Uh, yo soy el gerente de la sucursal de Alliance Catholic Credit Union, uh, que está localizado en la Burner Junction. Uh, yo tengo en, uh, en esta industria más de 10 años. Uh, bregando con este, negocios, préstamos para negocios, uh, préstamos personales para carros, abriendo cuentas. So, realmente lo he hecho casi todo. Uh, yo me, no me espe específicamente en un área, sino en muchas. Um, eso es lo que yo hago. Hi, buenas, good afternoon. My name is Carlos Duran. I work at the Alliance Catholic Credit Union and Burner and Junction. I specialize in opening business accounts, business loans, opening accounts, uh, cars, mortgages, uh, HELOCs, and I will have over about 10 years in experience uh, in this department or field. Uh, and uh, thank you for having me. Okay. And Carlos failed to mention he's the manager of that branch <laughs> in English. <laughs> A little minor detail. He's the guy to know. Hola, mi nombre es Andy Samurai, trabajando con Sherwin Williams. I've worked for Sherwin for about 11 years now, uh, various roles. I've been a sales rep. I work now at the Lincoln Park store, where we specialize in commercial and industrial sales. Awesome. Entonces, Andy trabaja para Sherwin Williams. Están aquí participando en el panel porque um, uno de los puntos más importantes en, en empezar tu historial de crédito es tener una buena relación tanto con tu banco y con, con los prestamistas, con tus proveedores. Entonces, vamos a hablar de, con, con Andy acerca de cómo puedes sacar una línea de crédito en las tiendas, que es algo muy pequeño y un paso muy importante para sacar tu, tu historial de crédito. So, we invited Sherwin Williams to participate in this panel for a very interesting reason. Um, typically, you wouldn't think of a paint store as being something that would affect your credit but it's actually one of the best places to get started when you're trying to create a commercial credit history. And so for those of you who are watching us live or are in our, um, our Zoom call or on Instagram, Facebook, um, starting your, your history, your credit history with a small 
storefront, like a home, or, or even something as big as Home Depot, but with your commercial line of credit. Don't waste your opportunity by using your personal credit for those types of things. So we want to start that process. Um, for those of you who are on Instagram, we're also on Facebook right now, on Facebook Live. I believe we're in Puente Cultural Integration, correct? Um, on both Facebook and on um, Instagram Live. So if either anybody wants to switch from one platform to the other, feel free to bounce. Um, my name is Bridget Espinosa, and I am the owner of Puente Cultural Integration. Um, I am also the founding, uh, the founder of Business Alianzas, a business networking and support agency that is a membership organization. And so all of the people that are with us today are either members or prospective members and partners with us in that process. So thank you all for being here today. So we're going to be talking about commercial credit today, I'm thinking about how do we start to build our commercial credit. The majority of our audience are brand new businesses, startups. We have a lot of contractors that worked as uh, side hustle businesses pre-pandemic and have now formalized their business practices and are looking to expand. Um, and so that's kind of what brought about this topic today is that people don't understand how to, what's the difference between personal credit and business credit. So do you think we can start off with that topic? And so vamos a hablar cuál es la diferencia entre tu historia de crédito comercial y cuál es tu, la diferencia de, de tu, um, tu crédito personal y cómo se, se hablan, ¿verdad? Están conectados. ¿Está apagado? Está apagado, Alex. ¿Ya está? Ya. Yeah. Pues creo que hay una diferencia muy grande entre, entre el crédito person, personal y el crédito de una empresa. Para empezar, cuando tenemos el crédito personal, normalmente desde chicos a veces tenemos un pequeño ahorro, so, estamos empezando con algo, tenemos, tenemos um, la, la habilidad de, de ir a, a, al banco y, y este, empezar ahí y a veces es más fácil, digamos las tarjetas de crédito son más fácil que nos las aprueben una tarjeta con un límite chiquito para una, para una personal, cuando es de negocio tienes que empezar a enseñar que tú personalmente puedes este, tener el crédito y aparte el negocio, tienes que, tienes que enseñar este, a estados financieros buenos para la compañía y aparte el carácter de la persona. So, creo que es, eso es una, una grande diferencia, aparte empezar el negocio es, es este, más difícil, hay, hay cosas este, legales que tienes que hacer antes, de, antes de, uh, de abrir una cuenta del banco, antes de, este, de, uh, de pedir un crédito. Okay. Puedes repetirlo en inglés, por favor. Yes. <laughs> there's, um, I believe that there's a big difference between um, opening credit, personal credit and opening business credit. When, when you are opening a um, personal credit, it's easier because, especially if you start with savings, and you are in, a, in an institution, it's easier for that institution to offer you a uh, credit card. When you start in a business credit, you need to prove that there's, um, that you personally are liable, you know, that you personally um, are um, responsible. responsible. Plus you have also the additional work that you have to do to start your business. So. It's like a second layer. Okay, thank you so much. Saul. ¿Cuál es? Cuando estás aplicando, vamos a decir que alguien entra a, a pedir un préstamo de Comerica Bank, ya son miembros de, de Comerica, ya tienen años eh, trabajando con ustedes. Um, ¿Nos puedes dar um, tres cosas muy importantes cuando están pidiendo un préstamo para negocio? Eh, puedes utilizar un, un ejemplo real, si, si tienes a la, a la mano, uh -huh. um, de, de cuáles son las tres cosas que necesitan tener listos para empezar a hablar con, con un banco sobre un préstamo. Sí. Este, Comercial. Es, uh -huh. es muy importante tener el, um, el plan, el business plan. Para plan de negocio. Uh, demostrar uh, este es el negocio. Um, y, 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 y los planes de, de, de cómo 
dar este, pruebas de cash flow para pa hacer el, el, el pago del préstamo. Y también un, una gran diferencia de los préstamos personales y comerciales es, es los personales necesitas um, a veces el credit score y los impuestos, los tax returns, pero cuando son comerciales pedimos los este, financial statements. Pero no okay. sé. Yo te puedo ayudar en inglés, no hay yeah. digo en español. Entonces necesitan los documentos financieros como sí, un, financieros. un reporte de tus finanzas personales uh -huh. este, y no tanto el, el número de, de, tu, um, de tu crédito pues, que muestra tu historial, ¿no? Uh -huh. Entonces. Sí, el crédito comercial se, eh, se prueba por los documentos financieros en, uh -huh. en lugar del credit score. Entonces, necesitas uh, a veces uh, dos o tres años de, de, de este, reportes financieros. para, para como a, Así es como analista de crédito, eso es lo que nos uh -huh. fijamos. En lugar del credit score, los eh, documentos financieros. Y eso es una diferencia muy grande. Y otra diferencia es uh, colateral. Uh, también para personales, uh, las tarjetas de crédito son unsecured, so no hay colaterales, nomás tu crédito de credit score y otras cosas. Pero los comerciales uh, uh, pedimos colateral, por ejemplo, un carro, una casa o lo que sea. Un seguro de vida sí. es también mucho, muy, mm -hmm. muy típico, ¿no? ¿Puedes repetirlo en inglés? Que te va a ser yes. un poquito más fácil. Uh, okay. so, um, One of the biggest differences when opening a, per versus a commercial account versus a personal account is um, instead of a credit score to um, uh, to show proof of credit worthiness, we have to look at financial statements. Um, and um, the other thing is uh, we'll also ask you for collateral um, because uh, Unlike uh, you can get a credit card, for example, that's unsecured. Uh, that's just based on your credit worthiness. But uh, for commercial loan, um, we had to make sure we protect our our commercial loans are uh, essentially our deposits. So we had to make sure we get those deposits back. Right. So just in case the business can't repay us, we may need to make sure we have a safety net. So that's when the collateral comes in whether it's uh, a car or a house or whatever you're trying to finance with the yeah. bank. And a business plan, you mentioned that earlier too. Mm -hmm. So just to recap, this is really important. So if you're going to apply for a business loan, regardless of who's going to be doing the lending, this is true for traditional lending, SBA lending, and our micro lending, mm -hmm. you need to have a business plan. You need to have your um, usually three years of financial statements, um, including your tax return and uh, your personal financial statement, which is, you would think you wouldn't need that, but you do, because regardless, it's still your own personal character that's on the line. And then typically with most um, business loans, commercial loans, you are gonna need to put up some sort of collateral, whether you have, um, depending on how large, obviously, the, the loan is. If you're buying a piece of property, they'll use that piece of property as the collateral. If it's just for your operational budget or for things that you need for your business, they'll usually put your own home if you have a personal home. And if you don't have those things, one of the ways that they can get around that is to have you take out a life insurance policy on the loan. And this also um, that also might be a requirement just because if you as the business owner happen to pass away and nobody else is responsible for your business, your heirs are not responsible for that loan. And so it is important that they have that life insurance policy. So don't be afraid by that. That I, A lot of clients <laughs> kind of freak out when they're like, why is this bank taking out a life insurance policy on me? So I think that that's a really important thing. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about what's the difference between traditional lending and micro lending. What is the difference between working with a CDFI like Opportunity Resource Fund and working with a traditional bank such as Comerica? And you have a experience in both, Carlton. So go ahead and answer that question in English and then I will respond and translate for you. So if you can kind of pause in between. Let me repeat the question in Spanish sure. just so people understand what we're talking about here. So. Ahorita vamos a hablar sobre la diferencia entre un préstamo comercial tradicional con un banco grande como Comérica y un préstamo comercial con una institución um, de la comunidad que son los micro prestamistas. 
Okay, well, so I think one of the main differences, um, you know, you can almost think in terms of a um, continuum that, that things run on, right? So typically you're going to have commercial banks in, in one space, then you have perhaps credit unions, then, you, then perhaps you'll have someone like us, like a CDFI, right? We're a, a uh, mission-driven organization. Then you may have, I think my, my, my friend isn't here anymore, but, but a hard money lender. Yeah. So that's typically the way it works. Now, oftentimes, that's also the way that the additional level of risk that the bank is willing to take on. So That's a perfect question. I was looking for that word, so I'm so glad you said it. Indeed. Yeah. And so there are different ways to mitigate risk, but the bottom line is that each one of those segments are more able are, are better able to assist depending on risk, but you also have to know that along with risk typically comes cost, right? So in order for a bank to take on that additional risk, they may charge a little bit more. Now, let me, let me, I think this, we, it's not a good part for me to, to do some quick interpreting here. I'm going to summarize, too. I'm not going to do the whole thing word for word, obviously. Entonces, una de las cosas que cuando estamos mirando lo que es el, la línea de entre un banco tradicional como Comérica y un microprestamista, entre ellos hay también los credit unions, los uniones de crédito, que caen entre... Comerica y Opportunity Resource Fund, por ejemplo. Los hubiéramos sentado. We should have sat you in the right order. Yeah. Um, <laughs> y también hasta el final, también hay préstam préstamos privados, que típicamente los mencionamos como hard money lending, que cuando es un, un trato que no requiere... Um, un, y no afecta tu historial de crédito también. Entonces, eso es un, un continuo. Que, y parte de eso, y la palabra clave aquí es el riesgo. Cuando el riesgo es bajo, puedes ir con Comérica o cualquier otro banco grande y ellos normalmente te pueden sacar un préstamo. Típicamente empiezan con un préstamo de la SBA, porque eso también está garantizado con el por el gobierno. Y luego cuando llegas así en medio, estás hablando con alguien como Carlton de Opportunity Resource Fund, que el riesgo es alto el costo para ellos también es más alto. Y cuando el costo es más alto, van a pasar ese costo también al cliente. Entonces, típicamente, un préstamo, solamente por decir, lo, se fluye mucho así los niveles de intereses, pero vamos a decir, con una, un préstamo de SBA, va a ser a 5%. Si vas con Opportunity Resource Fund, you're at 7% now, correct? Is right, exactly. Okay. The... La mayoría de los microprestamistas ahorita están prestando a 7%. El chiste es, y estoy poniendo mi propia cosecha aquí, eso no fue parte de la traducción, es que esos 7%, el riesgo ahí vale mientras vas a ganar más de 7%. Mientras tus ganancias sean más de lo que pediste prestado, estás ganando, utilizando el dinero de alguien más. So that's where the risk factor comes in. It's that difference, and I, I'm not sure we said it in English, so I'm going to repeat it. Um, the, the risk factor has to, it makes it more expensive to borrow. And so if a traditional lender or an SBA lender might lend you at 5%, and don't quote me on that because the interest rates are constantly changing. But our micro lenders currently are, are lending at 7%. We're hoping they stay there, but they might not. Mm -hmm. um, a hard money lender might lend at 15. So it's a big difference in what that money's gonna cost you in the long run, but that's because it mitigates the risk. May I add one thing? Please. Okay. I was going to ask you to continue. Okay. Yes. Well, and actually, I'm going to be brave. So if, if I mess up, just throw something. We'll be fine. Somos una organización empozada por una... Of course, my daughter decides to text me at that right time. <laughs> okay, so let me try again. Somos una organización empozada por una misión... I know I messed that one up. No, um, you did good. Ofrecemos... Um, prostamos a personas que históricamente histori histori han tenido problemas para hacer a los prestamos tradicional tradicionales. Uh, somos un CDFI, por lo tanto no competimos con bancos como Comérica, sino que trabajamos en estrecha colabor 
Colaboración. Thank you. Con sun referencias. Super referencias. bien. Gracias. Close. Gracias por hacer so, so the bottom Thank line you. is that really, we really are a mission-driven organization. Okay, so we're not... Let me repeat that in please. Spanish because I, I did miss that. And you've said it twice now, so Absolutely. I want to make sure I say that again in Spanish. Es una organización que se maneja por su misión. Entonces, para ellos, cada persona que entra a sentar con ellos, ellos miran la misión de ellos, que es dar acceso a, a financiamiento a las comunidades emprendedores que no han tenido acceso an, an, antiguamente, ¿no? Así, históricamente aquí, y específicamente Carlton trabaja directamente aquí en la ciudad de Detroit. Entonces, eso es muy importante. Opportunity, uh, Opportunity Resource Fund is actually located in Grand Rapids, but Carlton is working here in the city of Detroit directly with our, and the surrounding metro Detroit area, sure. um, southeastern Michigan, actually, correct? Right. Um, to support all entrepreneurs, mostly entrepreneurs of color and right. women are, are the primary groups that they're working with. And so I think it's really important to understand that. So thank you so much. We really appreciate everything thank you. that you're doing. Okay, Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Carlos, ¿nos puedes explicar cuál es la diferencia entre un credit union y un banco? Oh, can you explain the difference between a credit union and a bank, please? Sí, claro. Hasta la gran diferencia, digamos, entre un banco a un credit union como nosotros, digamos. Nosotros en Alliance, claro, somos también diferente a otros credit unions. So también hay diferencia en credit unions. So también este, eso también es una diferencia. Pero nuestra, nuestra diferencia de a un banco es que nosotros miramos en, en todos los modos que podamos ayudar al miembro. Uh, nosotros tratamos de, uh, claro, asegurarnos que todo lo que hagamos para un miembro le vaya a ser beneficiario a ellos para, digamos, abrir su negocio o para comprar un pedazo de maquinaria que necesitan o para un préstamo que necesitan. Nuestro, nuestro digamos, nuestra misión es que el miembro salga, digamos, ganando al final. Uh, nosotros también miramos a muchos modos en que, digamos, no nomás vemos a su credit score, que no nomás es su historial, también vemos este, si ellos han pagado anterior bien de su vida personal. So, vimos, vemos como todos los modos en que podamos ayudarlos. So, no nomás tenemos como un ABC, nosotros tenemos como un A, B, C, D, E, F. <risa> Tratamos de bajarnos a ver cómo le podemos hacer para a tratar de ayudar al miembro. So, nosotros, en la en gran diferencia, claro, un banco tiene sus, sus, sus escalones, que lo que ellos tienen que hacer. Nosotros tenemos la libertad de tratar de ver en todos los modos en cómo podemos ayudar al miembro. Uh, in English, uh, I guess the biggest difference between a, a, a bank, I guess you can say, and a credit union, I was saying that even credit unions are different. Like not all credit unions are the same also. There is also a difference between in between credit unions, but one of the biggest difference between a bank and us, which is Alliance Catholic Credit Union, is that we try to look at every way possible in that we can assist the member Our mission is to make sure that the member ultimately is able to do what they want and are successful in whatever they're doing. So our goal is to make sure that they come out on top and that we look at every possible way that we can help them. So I was saying that it's not just the ABC format and we and when we go into approving a loan, we'll go into a ABC, D, E, F, G and to try to get the loan approved and also that it makes sense for the member to get it so like that they're able to grow their business and obviously accomplish what they, they want to do. Thank you, Carlos. Andy. Thank you. Okay, so we've been having um, a little bit of a discussion and, and again, the reason that we invited Sherwin-Williams to participate in this panel, it's kind of an unusual addition to a banking panel, but our stores, are a great first step to creating credit history. And they go in both directions, both your personal credit history and um, your commercial credit history. But one of the biggest errors we have seen is that most people will go into Home Depot as a contractor and they'll use their personal credit to finance a job and then they'll just pay that back. So you want to start looking at what you can do to increase that. So, entonces, vamos a hablar sobre cómo los, los pequeños pasos de empezar a, a crear tu historial de crédito comercial. El primer paso puede ser sacar una, un crédito con Home Depot, con Sherwin-Williams, con alguna 
tiendas si eres de comida, Restaurant Depot, por ejemplo, también te ofrecen crédito. Y no hacerlo en tu nombre, sino con el nombre de tu negocio y con tu AIN, tu número de identificación del IRS, anticipando cuál es la visión de tu negocio para hacerte crecer. So, Andy, can you talk to us a little bit about what is the process and the, um, the criteria for creating a commercial, a, a commercial credit account with Sherwin-Williams specifically? Yes. Plenty about that, but I think one of the most important things with a new business is cash flow. Establishing a line of credit with myself or another supplier is a great way to. Hold on, the, the microphone's disconnected real quick. Okay, keep talking. Perfect. Yeah. So the this process is very simple. You'll stop into a store. You can also do it online. You'll provide basic information. If you have an EIN number, that's great. If you have an LLC, you can use that to apply versus your personal credit. Uh, either way works well for the establishing that business credit with us. Okay. And how long is the application? The process takes less than a day, typically. If you come in in the morning, our credit team will review it throughout the day. Typically, by 4 p.m., you'll have an answer on what we can offer you. Okay, awesome, gracias. Entonces, es súper sencillo el proceso. Y me puedo imaginar que es muy parecido en cualquier otra tienda, si no tienes necesidad de pintura para tu negocio, pero cualquier otro, otra tienda, que puedes utilizar el nombre de tu LLC, el nombre de tu negocio, el nombre de tu identificación del IRS, lo que llamamos el EIN, y también este, típicamente pueden aprobarte dentro de, del mismo día laboral. Entonces, es una aplicación, una solicitud bastante fácil de, de empezar. Y repito, él, él acaba de decir que puedes hacerlo con tu nombre personal, lo puedes hacer con tu crédito no personal. Y lo que más están, van a mirar es tu flujo de ingreso. Entonces, ellos quieren saber cuánto estás ganando mensualmente y cuánto estás con ganancias y si tienes el dinero suficiente para poder volverlo a pagar. Es lo más importante de todo. Um, so we are just over our time. Andy, I know you have to leave, so if you want to go ahead and, and tap out, you're welcome to. I'm going to ask everybody else, I'm going to go over our time just a minute. Can you give us a 30-second piece of advice on how to either improve your credit history or establish your credit history? So just a quick one, two sentences, what's your one bit of advice, one little piece of advice? And, and if you want to start, then you can tap out. <laughs> yeah, sure, so absolutely. With an account with a supplier, if the quicker you pay it off, the quicker you develop that payment history is a great way that the credit bureaus will start to improve that rate. The last piece I'll add to Please. having an, an account with a supplier, especially in the painting industry, is access to um, financing on sprayers, escaleras, things like that to <laughs> that cost a little bit more money and we offer uh, typically low interest or zero interest financing on those machines and you oh, I didn't even make know a down payment on an on a piece maybe it's you know 25 maybe it's 50 depending on that credit history prior Perfect. to that and then we'll give that machine to you for three months payments, six months, stuff awesome. like that. So it's oh, a really great. great piece for new businesses. Great little, two little really important pieces. Of, I'm going to translate that into Spanish. So, uh, su consejo es que lo pagues lo más rápido posible. Um, entonces, si sacas un, un, una tarjeta con un, una tienda, lo más rápido que lo puedes pagar de vuelta, más acceso vas a tener a una línea de crédito mayor la siguiente vez que lo necesitas. Algo que yo no sabía de, de Sherwin-Williams, ya tenemos tres años siendo partners con ellos, es que también uh, venden el equipo que necesitas, escaleras, los, eh, las bombas para el spray y todo eso, que son mucho más costosos que la misma pintura. Y ahí es donde la, el financiamiento realmente puede servirte si estás trabajando en construcción. Entonces, so, gracias, Andy. Thank you so much for participating with us today. Carlos, your one bit of advice. Go ahead, tap out. Yep. El, este, el advice que sería en español el, <laughs> Look, you can just el start consejo. In English, you'd rather. Oh, okay, okay. El consejo <laughs> que este, yo daría para empezar este, el historial de un negocio, obviamente sería como agarrar un préstamo o una tarjeta de crédito abajo del negocio, como del EIN, 
Obviamente eso va a empezar su historial, casi como si fuera de crédito personal, pero va a empezar el historial del negocio. Se puede empezar con una tarjeta de 2,500 y claro, la puede usar para comprar este material, para comprar este cualquier cosa y eso va a empezar ya cuando quiera un préstamo más grande, ya va a poder, podemos nosotros decir, oh mira, tenía una tarjeta de crédito para su negocio hace seis meses, la usó responsable, nosotros no tenemos problema prestándole 10 mil o 20 mil dólares para que ya, digamos, haga un préstamo para un trabajo más grande. Yes, so the piece of advice that I would give to someone uh, how to establish their business credit would be to obviously get a credit card to establish your credit history for the business under the EIN. Obviously, we offer that in the sense that if you just opened, if you just started your business yesterday and you want to get a credit card, obviously it's really hard, but we offer many ways for you to get a business credit card without you being in business uh, prior to two years. Uh, and obviously that will help you in the future when you want to get a bigger loan for like five, ten, twenty thousand dollars for your business. You'll ha have your business already credit established. Okay. So I'm just going to repeat the first two real quick just to summarize. So, primero es sacar en crédito con una tienda, un proveedor, y el segundo es sacar una tarjeta de crédito con un límite bajo y que lo vas a pagar cada mes. Entonces, esas son dos cosas diferentes, ¿verdad? Uno que es una línea de crédito que, que vas a sacar como un mini préstamo que en la tienda y lo vas a pagar lo más rápido. Y luego una tarjeta de crédito que lo vas a pagar mensualmente para que puedas lograr. Ok. You have been in banking for 30 years, 30 años, Tini Carlton, trabajando en, the, en the la industria real. bancaria. So, I'm excited to hear your advice. What's your single most important advice? Okay, now, single most important? I can, I can give you two. Okay, give me two. Okay. I, I knew you were going to do that. So, <laughs> I could see it in your eyes. So, eyes. the single most, well, no, okay. So, one piece, and probably is the most important, small business owners tend to want to do things by cash, right? Well, why? Well, because we're thinking that it's going to lower the tax bill. So, your tax accountant might be happy, but your banker won't be. Okay, so at the end of the day, we want to see you want to run things so it's properly recorded because we need to be able to see what type of cash flow you really have, right? Because ultimately, all lenders these days, just about every lender is a cash flow lender. We want to see what type of debt service coverage you have. And so we don't know if you may be cheating yourself if you're not really reporting all the cash that's going through properly, right? So that's yeah, one. Yeah, let me translate that. Okay, hemos escuchado varias veces hoy. Flujo de ingreso. Y eso es muy importante. Para que sepan, cuando vas a sacar un préstamo comercial, todo el mundo, cada banco, cada institución, lo que van a ver es son tus estados de cuenta durante tres años. Te van a pedir 36 estados de cuenta. They're going to ask for 36 months of your bank statements so they can look at your cash flow. What's coming in, what's going out. If you are running a cash business, They can't see that. Entonces, si estás ganando en efectivo y pagando en efectivo, y eso es muy típico en la industria de, de construcción, que recibes un trabajo de cinco mil dólares y te pagan en efectivo de ese dinero, pagas a toda tu gente, vas a Home Depot y pagas tu tarjeta. Si ese dinero no toca tu cuenta de banco, no saben cuál es tu flujo de ingreso. Entonces, el, el, la relación que tienes con tu banco no es solamente con préstamos, es cotidiano. Tienes que estar disciplinado de poner cada centavo que ganas y cada centavo que gastas dentro del banco para que puedas mostrar ese flujo de dinero. Super, super, super importante. Thank you. That's, I think, is the single most important thing. And I know you've got another piece. Let's let these guys yep, talk and then absolutely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with you, Carlton. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to let you talk at the very end. So go ahead, Saul. Uh, Comerica gets two seats, so, you know. <laughs> For me, I think the most important thing is the business plan um, because it, it, that shows, you know, how are you going to uh, find clients, you know, how are you going to make money, what are you going to do in five, ten years. Um, for example, like, are you, have you been a mechanic f for 20 years and now you want your own shop, you know? Or, or, or you have a good customer base already, or whatever. And, and does Comerica require a 20-page business plan, or can you do the, the cheat sheet three-pager? <laughs> what do you, do you I mean, you, you would look at these, right? Yeah. Do they yeah. want the 20-page business plan? N uh, no, it's not necessary. Okay. I mean, 
it can be simple. Okay. <laughs> So I think a lot of people get a little overwhelmed, right? When they look at, especially those people who have been in business for 20 years, they're like, I'm a mechanic, I'm gonna fix cars. Of course, you know, how difficult is this? So I think that's a really important thing. It doesn't have to be a 20 page business plan. You just need to show what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So para él, lo más importante es que tengas un plan de negocios escrito. Eso muestra qué estás haciendo hoy, quiénes son tus contactos, cómo vas a hacer tu marketing, pero también explica tu visión para tu futuro, porque un préstamo no es de hoy, es para el futuro, ¿verdad? Es, es, estamos pidi pidiendo un, presta un préstamo para nuestros futuros ingresos. Si tuviéramos el dinero ahorita, no necesitaríamos el, el préstamo, ¿verdad? Entonces, para saber cómo vas a llegar a poder pagar el préstamo de vuelta, es muy importante. Entonces, por eso necesitas ver eso por escrito. Pero no tiene que ser de 20 páginas. Lo puedes hacer de tres páginas. I just realized I didn't need to translate yours for you, but I did, okay. so we're good to go. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. I just wanted to reinforce what you were saying because it was really important. Yo diría que, que una cosa muy importante es que sus estados financieros este, reflejen su, su business plan. Do not be creative with your, uh, with, the, you, with your financial statements because that's the number one thing that we look at when we are, you know, um, consider when, where to extend credit or not. So get a, a um, good accountant that understands your business plan and, you know, reflect your future there. Yeah, your current and future, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things that Comerica shared with us in, the, in our workshop that I think is really important is that character is the most important um, feature of, of who they're going to lend to, and that is reflective of that, right? If your financial statements aren't the same as your tax return, that happens a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, that's a big red flag. Si tu, si, si tus estados de cuenta y tu plan de negocio no están cuadrando con tu declaración de impuestos, esa es un, una banderita roja y tu carácter ahorita está mostrando fraude. Entonces, tener todo súper derechito y todo claro, blanco y negro, no es difícil hacerlo. Simplemente es depositar todo, sacar todo y documentar todo. No es tan difícil. Cuando estás haciendo trampitas, es cuando empiezas a, a tener problem, problemas. Carlton, we're going to let you wrap up our evening with the last piece of advice, and then I'm going to let Comerica um, just finish up with the last two, two or All three. All right. Well, very good, very kind of you. The one thing I, I, I'd end with is really kind of going to that business plan, and that is we all know the story about um, what is it? We don't, no one plans to fail. We just fail to plan. Yep. And so you, what you want to make sure to do is do, do the planning, really focus on that, and understand there's a whole ecosystem out there there to help, right? right? So we have folks at, so at, at Opportunity Resource Fund, we actually have what's called the, um, and now, of course, the, 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 the name of it escaped me, but the bottom line is it's the Justice Fund, basically, okay? So we have what's called a Justice Fund. You can go in there. We have a whole lineup of people that can assist you that's, that's knowledgeable in whatever they do, and they're willing to assist at very, very low rates, a lot of times free. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the SBDC, if you're having trouble developing that business plan, go seek those places out. Go seek places out like Bridget. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's great. I was going to end with that, so it's perfect timing. Okay, entonces, lo que él dice que no es solamente um, que los que no programamos a, a, a fallar, sino los que fallamos en no planear, no planificar, ¿no? Entonces, hay que buscar los recursos que hay. Hay muchos que de muy bajo costo o hasta gratis que puedes ir Um, y pueden llegar directamente con nosotros y nosotros te podemos apuntar. Nosotros no escribimos business plans, es demasiado complicado, no me gusta. No me gustó ni, ni escribir el mío. Um, pero nosotros tenemos los recursos y somos este, socios con cuatro, cinco, seis organizaciones sin fines de lucro que puedan ayudar con escribir el plan de negocio. So we have support um, in this area. There are, as you said, the ecosystem, right? There are probably like seven or eight different organizations that have, that are experts in business plan writing. I personally 
know how to write one. I wrote my own and I hated every minute of it. So I don't like writing them for other people, but I can review it. I'm really good at reviewing and editing because I used to be a high school teacher, so I like to get up my red pen. Um, but yeah, so that's a really important. Use your resources. Recursos y oportunidades es pues nuestra misión aquí en Puente y en Business Alianzas, que nosotros damos recursos y oportunidades a la comunidad inmigrante. Entonces, eso es lo que nos dedicamos todos los días. Se pueden comunicar con Jasmine o con Cynthia o conmigo en cualquier momento, tanto para, eh, por Instagram, por Facebook, por email, um, team arroba puentecei.com. Nos pueden escribir para pedir una junta o por Messenger también está bien, muy bien. Okay, so I'm going to let our sponsors wrap up our night and say good, good evening to everybody tonight. So I want to thank everybody for coming out, tanto los que están aquí presentes um, en este evento híbrido. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight, um, those who are here present with us at Latino Press and those who have been joining us online on our Facebook. And whether you're watching this today live or you're watching it um, you know, a few days from now, uh, we know this has been really valuable. So I want to personally thank our sponsors, Comerica Bank, Alliance Catholic Credit Union, for always being our partner, um, and especially Opportunity Resource Fund, a new partner for us. And um, also just to give the shout out to El Chile for bringing in the burritos, and um, also for Central Management, uh, Rosalind Barr for providing our um, beverages for this evening. So go ahead and have one of those when you're done with everything. So Comerica, if you guys would like to say a couple words and then we're going to tap out. Thank you so much for having us. We enjoy being here. Hope, hopefully you guys learn from us and please connect with me on LinkedIn or send me a message or whatever. We're here to help. So thank Great. you. Thank you so much, Saul. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos y um, lo mismo que dice Saul, ojalá y hayamos contestado todas sus dudas y si tienen alguna otra pregunta pueden este, comunicarse con nosotros y nosotros se las, o se les responderemos o le haremos llegar la respuesta a, a Bridget. Muy bien. Yeah, I did want to apologize for not allowing time for questions. I, I meant to, but we were, we were already out of time. So if anybody has questions, no vamos a correr rápido. Si cualquier persona que tiene pregunta o duda pueden hacer una pregunta a cualquier de nuestros panelistas o pueden hablar con Jasmine y Cynthia. Muchísimas gracias y buenas noches.